Hello, this is Dr. Heath Van Horn. Um, this video is a combination of uh, performing OSPF and uh, DHCP. You cannot do DHCP without OSPF working first. So let's address this. I already have a pre-built network I threw together. You didn't need to see me click, 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 click and put labels on. So I did all that previously to this recording to make it a little bit faster. The other thing I did is I took the switches out. This is not normal, but our networks are getting kind of busy to have the switches in there. So all I used in there um, was this thing called a crossover cable. This is not what you would see in real life. Um, but that works well for uh, simplifying the page that you're working on. You don't have to do it that way. Um, you can still put the switch in there, the unmanaged switch, which is fine. Um, but this way, it leaves you some more room to put labels and stuff. The other thing I've done is I also put in labels. Uh, these are non-standard labels. Normally, your label would just say this, and you would have to know that that, because you know this is a PC, you know that has to go into um, an RJ port. So the point one would mean this subnet ID, instead of dot zero, it'd be dot one. So, all right. So let's put those back in there. So that way it's a little bit more descriptive. Um, I know some of you are getting lost. Um, it is not my intention to do so. However, I am skipping stuff that we've gone over several times before. And um, be, just because I think it's a waste of time to go over it yet again. If you need to go over, review stuff, go back and watch the other videos and practice until you master that material. Um, this is also going to pretty much skip over uh, DHCP because there's also a little video on that. However, I will configure this PC uh, with DHCP once we're complete here. All right, so let's just make sure we all have IP addresses. I think they're all set. That looks pretty good. Uh, that looks pretty good. And that looks pretty good. Okay, so these are just random IP addresses I got off the random I site, which is on. Uh, the lab 12 and the resources on the left hand side. So right now, none of these will ping because we do not have any static routes. We do not have anything um, going on, but these should ping here and they should ping from there to there. And it'll fail the first time always and then it will be successful. Same thing up here. It'll fail and then it'll be successful. Why? Because it has to build the routing table. The very first ping is going to be a failure because the first ping is what it builds its routing table on and then it'll work on the pings after that. You should know that from your reading. All right. So now we have to figure out a way to get these to ping each other without having to put in a static table every time. And that's where OSPF comes in. So OSPF, from your reading, right, um, is a way where you put in the network and then the router will figure out the network for it to go to without having to statically put it in every time. So we're moving on from static routes to OSPF. All right, so OSPF is dirt, simple, easy. To, to configure. So let's open up this one here. Go to CLI. All right. And from there, config T, and we call it, cleverly enough, router OSP, oh, OSPF1 can be any number it's like the VLANs it can be any number that you assign I just use one because right now we only got one 
All right, so we, we have to tell OSPF1, notice that this has changed, we have to tell OSPF1 that um, what networks are attached to this router. And we tell them the network IDs, okay? So the network ID in this one, we just say network. The network ID for the red network is 85.0.0.0, okay? The wild card is 0 0.63.255.255. And then you say what area, and we're going to use area 0, okay? You can have different OSPF numbers up here. So you can have OSPF 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, whatever. It doesn't matter. Okay? But different areas have different rules. So if you want all your networks to talk to each other, they all have to be on whatever area you pick. I pick area 0. You can pick area whatever you want. Um, if you try to apply them to different areas, they will not talk. Okay? And there's reasons for this, but don't get, let's not get wrapped up around the axle. Let's get our OSPF to work first, so that way we can evaluate um, uh, later on why we would have different areas. All right, so that one works. So now we also have to include in the area the network that connects the two routers. So network 10.10.10.0. The wildcard mask for a uh, sitter of 30 is 0 .0 .0 .0 0.0.0.3, area 0. Okay, somebody out there, uh, Jamal, you are asking, well, what the crap is a wildcard? A wildcard is the opposite number of the subnet mask. So if your subnet mask is if your mask is 255.255.0.0, your wildcard is 0 0.0.255.255. Okay? So if our mask is 255.255.255.252, our wildcard is going to be the opposite of 255, which is 0. The opposite of 255, which is 0. The opposite of 255, which is 0. And the opposite of 252 is 3, right? Because 252 plus 3 is 255. So the opposite of 252 is 3. All right? Does that make sense? You should know that from your reading. All right. Let's get rid of that. Okay, so let's get back to our OSPF. So our OSPF is turned on. Nothing is going to happen at this point, okay? Nothing is going to happen because we only have one link in the chain connected. So we're going to turn, we're going to leave this one, and we're going to go into this one, and you're going to see some cool stuff here. Well, I think it's cool, but all right. So let's configure uh, the OSPF in, in the yellow router. So we just router OSPF1. Again, we can number this anything we want, but we don't need to. All right. And we got to tell it what networks are connected. So we have network ID 34192.0.0. And the wild card is 0. Dot seven dot two five five dot two five five. Okay, and again the areas have to match, otherwise they won't be able to talk to each other. All right, that one's not going to do anything either because PC one is not pinging anybody. Now when we do this next one, you'll see something happen. So network ten dot ten dot ten dot zero. The wild card is dot three, area zero, and I am going to open this up just a little bit. And when I hit enter, 
give it a second and you should see um, an up down statement there it goes so what it's saying is that it now knows where the other router is you don't have to tell it the next hop it is finding it automatically that makes things so much easier when you're programming things to not have to worry about what is the next hop okay let's see what that looks like when we do the when we look at that at the packets so you can do the edit filters and you can turn on just OSPF all by itself all right so if you turn that on all by itself make this we'll just make it medium speed you can see that the routers are sending packets to each other and to the distant end saying hey are you part of this network and they respond and the thing is these aren't pinging anything so all you care about are these two finding each other okay so you can see the OSPF all right so if we clear that and now we're going to add ping ICMP and let's ping from here to here and let's watch this go through and the packets are moving just fine without having to program a static route yay OSPF makes everything so much easier you do not have to do static routes Somebody out there, Jamal, is going to ask, why do we have to learn static routes? Well, if you don't understand static routing, when you program OSPF and you have an issue, you're not going to understand what the issue is because it hides all that static route information that you would normally be familiar with. Okay. So let's go back to real time. Now, let's switch this. To DHCP we don't have a DHCP machine here so what we're going to do is we're just going to delete that machine I never say yes to that because I never know what I have highlighted you go over here to the server you pop a server in here again use a crossover cable this is non-standard all right we're going to go from there to there we got to configure the desktop to have the same IP address that it, the last one did, uh, which is, according to our label, is 34.192.0.2. And the subnet mask is 255.248.0.0. The default gateway is 34.192.0.1 and Google is our DNS server all right so we got that so these servers this is where things get really unrealistic um, but it serves our purpose okay so let's go just turn on services go to DHCP I'm gonna make this a little bit bigger so you can see everything on one page There we go. All right. So I'm going to turn the server, uh, the DHCP service on. It's going to be on Fast Ethernet Zero because that's what we connected. We're going to call the pool name Red Pool. All right. The default gateway is the gateway the PC is going to be requesting the IP address from. So the default gateway is right here. So that is going to be 85.0.0.1. .0 .0 
And right here we have the dot one. That's the default gateway. The DNS server is going to be 8.8.8.8. .8 so no more of that silly 1.1.1.1 that you were chasing around for this last week's homework assignment. And we are already using dot one. So we don't want to start our IP address there. We want to start it at 85.0.0. Oops. 0, 0. And you can start it off at like 10 because that reserves you a pool of static IP addresses that you can use. Um, if, if things aren't DHCPing correctly, one of the troubleshooting tools is to use a static IP and you want to keep a small pool of those static IPs available to you. All right. So the subnet mask is 255-192-0-0. And that gives us like, I don't know, three or four million IP addresses, but we're just going to leave it at 512. Okay, that's, that's plenty. All right. And then we hit save. Cannot be modified or edited. A new pool will be added. Great. And so now you can see that we have, I'm going to open this right up. We have a new uh, pool called Red Pool. It's going to start at the IP address 85.0.0.10, 255.192.0.0, and then all this is the same. All right, so there's one thing we're missing now, and we need the helper address. Okay? So we need to hook uh, to connect the helper, or we need to set up the helper address. So what we do we go into here and we interface with FA00 and we say hey if somebody asks you for an IP address we want you to send them to this server over here and their IP address is so you put a uh, IP helper, I think it's helper dash, to 34.192.0, and we know that that interface is dot two, so we do dot two. And the subnet mask is 255. Oh, actually, you don't need a subnet mask for helper address. Okay. So that took it. We're good to go. And now, when we switch this from static to DHCP, it says DHCP was successful, and it assigned the very first IP address that we said to assign in here, which is 850010, and this one has the IP address of 850010. Look at that. And the gateway is the router, and now everything is running cool. All right, so if we want to see DHCP in action, we can go back to none, and we can put DHCP on here and we hit play and we might not see anything now i gotta turn it off again so give me a second i gotta turn it off and then turn it back on again so that way it actually um, starts sending a packet and you can see it send the packet it says hey i need to know what the dhcp is and then it comes back and it tells it hey, your IP number is going to be this. And now everything is working like it should. You want to see everything ping? Just turn on ICMP. You can turn DHC pack off. Delete. And we want to ping from here to here. We hit play. 
and we can see that the packets are navigating everything successfully. All right. If we want to add another PC, all we have to do is go into here. Let's say somebody rolls up with a laptop. And here, you can put in the, the switch if you want to. And then we're just playing around. So now you got from here to here. doesn't matter which one. From here to there. Except, oh, we don't have the helper there. So that's why it won't work. But let's, let's hook it up to... If we remove this cable, and we have this cable go to here, doesn't matter which one, and this one go from here to zero, zero, and we switch this one to VHCP, try it again. Oh, it hasn't turned green yet, so it'll keep failing until everything turns green. All right. And there it says DHCP 850012, and this one says it is probably B11. Yeah, so it doesn't reuse that old DHCP that we used. So, And that's how when you go to different places and you just plug into the wall, that's how you automatically get a, an IP address assigned to you, which is bad, bad, bad. Um, I have a lot of fun playing with DHCP, what IP addresses that the hotel or whatever will give me. All right, that is it. So from this information, you can build a whole new network of four different routers. I'm going to bring this up. open. Do uh, you want to save your network? No. Um, so if I bring this up, here we go, it's this one. You're going to build this network right here. Okay, I was going to uh, build it up over time, make a bunch of different videos, and I was like, this is silly. I'm not going to do it. Um, you can build this network. This, you can recognize as the network we just built. Okay, and it took us, what, 15 minutes? It took us no time at all. These other ones, you just add these nodes and you add these cross connects, okay? It's not that hard. You are your own worst enemy on this stuff. You can make this work. All right, so that is the end of this video. And I wish you luck. And if you have any questions, I make myself as available as I possibly can. Have a good evening. Thank you.